um, from Tennessee, 50 milligrams of Pristique for five plus years. Um, also five milligrams volume as needed, dysregulated and need help. Well, I wonder, okay, dysregulated. I'm wondering if you're referring to sleep is dysregulated, is mood dysregulated. Um, hmm. And if you've been on Pristique for five plus years, I would imagine you've been on it that long because it's been effective. I have to do a lot of guessing with this question. Um, so if there's some dysregulation, um, I would point to Valium being the culprit, especially if you've started using Valium more often. The reason being is because benzodiazepines, though, you know, people will say, yo, you're a hater and this, that, and the other, um, as far as when it comes to benzos, because they, they help so many people. And I recognize that, but in the long run, oftentimes, especially if you're taking it for a long time, you end up with rebound symptoms. You end up with, you know, this, this withdrawal, um, like inner dosing withdrawal, which doesn't happen much with Valium because it has one of the, it has the longest half-life when you're looking at benzos. It's very stable in that regards but if you've been taking it like say every day or every night and now it isn't working and now you feel dysregulated that could be the issue um so you have a couple of choices you can either increase the dose of valium or you could you know taper off of it um to get off of it and then also look for your underlying root causes because I imagine if you've been on Pristique for five years and then maybe that stopped working and now you're dysregulated, then we're, you're, we may be also dealing with something where you've ignored root causes and after some time, it kind of just hits you um, and then nothing, nothing works and then everything you try kind of backfires on you and does the opposite effect. Um, and when I see that, I start thinking of toxicities. I start thinking of, you know, toxic burden, mast cell activation syndrome, which is a result of a long, you know, heavy toxic burden. Um, when I say toxic burden, I'm, I'm talking about things like mold, um, even Lyme disease can cause something like that. Um, chemicals, um, chemical sensitivity. So too much exposure um, to different pollutants heavy metals um, like lead, even too much copper um, can be an issue. So, so there's a lot of things that can lead to this dysregulation, especially when you've been on something for a long time. So it, say it's like the benzo because you start taking it more regularly and that stopped working. It could be from that, but it could also be because there's a toxic burden going on um, and inflammation and underlying inflammation. So look for those things. Um, look at my video where I talk about the basic labs for mental health. If you have a provider who understands how to read those labs, um, then they um, can, can see if there's a pattern of a toxic burden going on uh, based off of your um, CBC with diff and your CMP. Um, based off of a few markers from those two things, you there's a pattern that will show up if you have a high toxic burden. Um, that we can be like be suspicious of and then do further testing like look for heavy metals or mold etc etc or even like gut dysbiosis and things like that but but yeah uh, that's unfortunate when that happens and and that's what um, you know Shelly was saying in her question where she wanted me to talk about skills before pills and all of that um, you know is that you know the whole issue lies um, with this system and not looking at the root causes first like the dsm to rule out medical conditions we have to rule out these root causes and when you're not doing that you're just being put on a pill yeah it might be effective for some time but if you're not filling if you're not closing all those holes in the bucket then you're just putting water in a bucket with holes maybe you plugged up one or two of them with the pill but but then over time it's just you know it's never going to get full and that underlying problem gets worse and worse and then you just your buckets never full because there's too many holes so you got to be careful with that okay is there another question from brian here we go plans for review of clomipramine for ocd plans maybe me please review for of clomipramine for ocd um so clomipramine is a um tricyclic um antidepressant that 
is often used for OCD. Um, and, and certainly I've had that on my list as far as making a video for it. Um, I won't cover it in detail, but you know, that's one of the, the topics I'm working on for a video. Uh, but just to kind of brief you guys on it, very effective, lots of research on treating o OCD. It's also known as an afrenal, um, afrenal. So, um, so yes, um, can be very effective for the treatment of those symptoms, but <laughs> lots of side effects. A lot of people can't tolerate it. So oftentimes you take, um, you, you take either the whole dose at night, um, or you can split the dose and do like a partial dose, like a small dose in the morning and then a larger dose at night to get the effectiveness, depending on the severity of the OCD itself. Um, but yeah, most people will have to take the dose at night um, because of sedation being one of the most common side effects. But then there's um, other side effects, dizziness, headaches, high blood pressure. Um, you're gonna have to monitor liver enzymes. Um, just thinking off the top of my head, oh, cardiac abnormalities. So looking at your heart rate, making sure you, you know, you're getting a yearly EKG, that it's not affecting your QT interval. Um, other things like um, dry mouth, so the, so the um, anticholinergic effects, um, so dry mouth, uh, constipation can be a factor. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. I already mentioned the nausea, the dizziness. Um, maybe urinary retention can be a problem down the road with it. So it comes with a lot of side effects, but a lot of people will find benefit with OCD and as I said before with skills before pills, it might be something that you can use short term for a few months, you know, while you're in therapy, you know, so that you can work on these skills, figure out your triggers, the thought process behind it, do, um, you know, the CBT for OCD and find a therapist that works specifically with that. Um, and then um, go ahead and, um, you know, come, you know, taper off after you've developed those skills, then you use those skills um, as you're tapering off of, of the clomipramine.